Good morning. Linder, I'd like to say a special welcome to you. Um, I heard about you many times, all, all the good things I heard about you, especially when I live with Ruth and Kirby. And many times we were talking and your name came out and I really realized that this congregation loves you and I love you also. Thank you for coming. My only problem there is that I wish you hadn't come at the day I'm preaching. <laughs> because I feel a little nervous, but that's okay. When a strange or a new or visiting theologian is in here, I get a little nervous, you know, but I hope God is in control of that. In our passage this morning, Luke chapter 12, verses 32 to 40, earlier read by Paul, we see that this is a great passage with so many great lessons to learn. In this passage, I am touched by verse 33, I mean 34, which says, For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. In Pele, the language I speak in Liberia, my father cited a proverb that says, Nuingo sangaya pori nyabunga burapunyoi. It translates as those who treasure lies across the river. Their garments will always be wet because they have to cross the river back and forth. This brings me to the question to all of us as people of God, as followers of Jesus Christ, where does our treasure lie? Here on earth, all in the kingdom of God. Today, we are confronted by high economic desire everywhere, every day. Primarily, we are spending our time, our energy, our resources, building for ourselves treasures on earth. Building for ourselves empires. Every day, every hour, every minute, 365 days a year, we are busy accumulating, never taking a break to say, wait a minute. Many people here or many people there who are building for themselves for you know, earth sometimes get to see people coming to church, volunteering their time, singing in the choir, donating their property for the growth of the church, for the mission of God. And I'm sure many of those people who sit out there seeing us laboring, coming to church, doing all of these things may take us to be crazy people. But let the world see us as crazy people. Let the world see you as a crazy person simply because you are working for Jesus. It is better for you to be crazy for Jesus than to be crazy for this world. However, today, it is a little heartbreaking that from my personal observation, many of us who used to volunteer in this church are no longer volunteering. Many of us who used to spend time doing a lot of work, making this church to grow, we are no longer coming. I know that many of us still have our hearts here because our treasure is right here. In our prayer of self-dedication, we get to say all the many good things and response. Because this is our church, we make it what it is. But the sad thing is, we cannot make this church what it's supposed to be if we stop volunteering. We cannot make this church what it's supposed to be if we stop attending services. We cannot make this church what it's supposed to be if we refuse to take initiative, if we refuse to take ownership of the projects here. We cannot make this church what it's supposed to be if we are not responding to the emails, to phone calls, if we are not reading the e-news, if we are not even opening the, the, the olive branch. A couple of weeks ago, somebody walked up to me and said, oh, Jerry, when are we going to start having the two services? I said, well, I need not to look elsewhere for those who are not reading the olive branch. Today, wheresoever we may be, it is time for us to rise up, to get on fire for Jesus, because it is better to be on fire for Jesus than to be on fire for this world. And when we volunteer for our church, when we come together and make this church what it's supposed to be, we get to build for ourselves treasures in heaven. Many of us been to New York City, and I personally call New York the city of concrete, uh, marrow, stew. 
Because of the sophistication of that city, the New York Police Department has an estimated 18,000 cameras linked to a system called the Domain Awareness System. I'm just saying I have no idea how it works, but Kirby knows very well. <laughs> the NYPD uses the physical and software component, components of these 18,000 cameras to keep watch over the cities. Times Square alone has 258 surveillance cameras. In Los Angeles alone, it has roughly 35,000 CCTV cameras of a 4 million population, which means nine cameras for every 1,000 residents, building for ourselves treasures on earth. In 2020, I took a little weekend trip to Cedar Rapids. When I returned one week later, I received $125 ticket in the mail for going 41 miles per hour. Recently, I passed, there's a town called Chester. I mean, on Highway 63, linking with Northern Iowa. Those of you who are going to be on that road, don't say I didn't tell you. <laughs> I received $125 ticket on that road. The other day, I was passing there a couple of weeks ago. I nearly got down to walk and cross the town before. So because I didn't want a second $125 ticket again. <laughs> From 2015 to 2018, and the number of installed surveillance cameras across the United States grew nearly 50 percent, 47 million, from 47 million surveillance cameras to 70 million surveillance cameras across the U.S. That was 2018 statistics. We are in 2022. The population of the United States is around 332 million, and you currently have 70 million CCTV cameras. Sooner than later, you're going to have one person to a camera all in the name of power, security, sophistication, keeping wash everywhere. But I got news for all of us. When we build for ourselves treasures in heaven, we don't have to worry about tea breaking in because in heaven, God's angels are washing 24 hours. When we build for ourselves treasures in heaven, we don't need to worry about surveillance camera because the angels are watching every day, and there is no intruder in heaven. When we build for ourselves treasures in heaven, we don't need a construction guy to come and repair our mansion or put a concrete slab on our driveway because God and Jesus Christ have permanently built that city. That city today, Lev Randolph is in that city waiting for Linda some days. My father departed, and he's in that city. He's waiting for me some days. Let us build for ourselves treasures in heaven, not on earth. I am aware that in America, technology has replaced the watchman with all the surveillance cameras all over the place. But in my village in Liberia, when the watchman washes over the farm, all the animals of the power of chief, he, get, he keeps burning the firewood because he wants for light to be around. He wants for fire to be around when the power of chief arrives. And this is the fire that's supposed to be burning in our soul day and night as people of God. Earlier this year, I spoke to a group and in one church here in Rochester, and I was talking with, sharing with them that through the eye of faith, Christianity is growing so fast in Africa that people are on fire for Jesus, that when they get to church, they just want to come to the altar to lie down before God's feet. They just want to sit to the front to say, God, here I am. A guy attending the forum said to me, well, we are Scandinavians. We don't like to assert ourselves. <laughs> I agree, and he and I don't had a very great conversation about that. But the reality is, those poor people who are coming to church, walking two hours as we speak to you Sunday in Liberia, everywhere now, they have covered two hours from their village, and they have covered two hours to go back, simply because they have to come to the big cities to listen to the good news. These people are not crazy for nothing, but if they are crazy, they are crazy for Jesus. If they are on fire, they are on fire for Jesus. Let us build for ourselves treasures in heaven. Where? There is no breakage where there is no rust. In America, we buy so much and accumulate so much that we are drowning in things. 
in America, some of us, our houses are sinking. Even we don't have places to walk freely. We don't have places to put our foot. And those houses are sinking and things are drowning with properties everywhere. Things all over the wardrobe, the corner, the bedroom, everywhere. And yet and still, we are still renting storage along the highways. <laughs> and sometimes we get to blame the Great Depression for that. I hear that, oh, they are doing it because, you know, because of the Great Depression. But the Great Depression has been over since 1941. This is 2022. <laughs> this is 2022. 81 long years, the Great Depression has been over. And people have the spirit of still buying and accumulating. And at the end of the day, lesson has told us that we came into this world with nothing. And we should leave this world with nothing. Why are we wasting our time building for ourselves treasures on earth? Christ is coming back. He could come today. He could come tomorrow. And we have a beautiful home that lies far away where the angels are singing, where the saints are living, where there is no sorrow, where there is no suffering, where there is no crying, where there is peace forever. May we build for ourselves treasures in heaven so that tomorrow we will inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jerry.